just have it Here I am. We stopped. All right. Because you're so cool. Right. I'm most going to talk to you. Perfect. <laughs> so here we are at an In N Out Burger in Ukiah, California. Let's see if you can see out there. Yep, mountains in the background. This is the first In N Out Burger, which is started here in California, that I've been to on the West Coast that has not been super busy. We've oh. actually been able to find a spot. I realized this was the first In N Out Burger, and I was like, Oh, no, no, no. That's not our first, but it's the first that we can actually find a spot to sit right away yeah. without hovering over other people and eyeing them down and making them leave. But what a view back there. Got the mountains. Pretty cool. Pretty soon we'll show you the stuff. We're not even hungry, but we passed this and we got to eat. This is how we roll. This is how we travel. So here we are again because they're right. just super nice here and the drinks are really good. So. Yep, and they're here and so we just put one in the Google Maps. The Heck Google yeah. Maps. The Google Maps. And uh, here we are in Santa Rosa, California. Heck yeah. All right, so what'd you get? Uh, the cookie one, which is like white chocolate and then chocolate macadamia in it. Ah, yummy. And I just got a brevet. And then Dad got a mango smoothie. And Check. Then we got the Snickers um, freeze thing. All right. Napa Valley is very famous. A lot of people ask me why Napa Valley, why do people come from all over the world to enjoy amazing wines here? So think of Napa Valley as location, 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 just like real estate. The Napa Valley is very special. It's a very small region. It's only 30 miles from the south end to the north end. We have 500 wineries in Napa Valley. Uh, if we were here 150 million years ago, we'd be underwater right now. Tectonic plates hit, volcanic activity, earthquakes, river systems, distributed soils here in Napa. So Napa Valley is special because we have half of the world's soils in Napa Valley and we have 16 subclimates in Napa Valley. Oh wow. So the Napa Valley, the word Napa means land of plenty in Native American. Waco Indians were here before the settlers came. Um, Napa Valley is comprised of these little smaller growing regions here. We call these Appalachians. So Napa Valley is an Appalachian. Within the Appalachian of Napa Valley, there's 16 sub-Appalachians, each having their own soil type and climate type. That's why Napa is famous. 2% of the world can do what Napa Valley can do. And if you do travel to Napa Valley, you'll notice mountain ranges on either side of the valley. This is the western side, the Mayakamas Range, protecting you from the Pacific Ocean breeze. On the eastern side is the Baca Range, protecting you from the heat inland. So we're in this region here, Oakville. Further south is our Los Carneros region, where our Pinots and Chardonnays grow. Pinots, Pinots and Chardonnays thrive in these cooler conditions. However, Cabernets can withstand the heat up in this region, Oakville. So that's Napa Valley. It's very famous, very special because location, location, location. Now how Napa Valley came to be was the uh, emergence of gold in California. Mm -hmm. So we have a map here of the California state. So the Sierra Foothills, when they found it in 1849, brought immigrants from all over the world looking for gold and they were also bringing their wine grapes here from their different countries that they were coming from. 
So you think of grapes that you know today, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec. Those were all brought over from Europe over here to Napa Valley. Why did they choose Napa Valley? Because it mirrors the growing regions that they were coming from. So they planted their different varietals here in these different regions. So that's what spurred commerce. So they were making wines out here from the 1800s till 1919 when Prohibition started. It really slowed Napa Valley down. From 1919 to 1933, you could still drink wine during Prohibition. There was a loophole in Prohibition State and you could still consume it, personal consumption, and also for churches needed it. So mm -hmm. they were making it for churches out here. But after Prohibition repealed in 1933, it took 33 years to get a new winery back to Napa Valley. And that was established in 1966. Robert Mondavi's winery was the first winery after Prohibition. That's hard to imagine. The Renaissance period in Napa Valley started with Robert Mondavi's winery in 1966. So if we look behind us here, we have Robert Mondavi. He basically set everything in motion. He's 80 years old in this photo. He drank a lot of wine in his lifetime. He lived to be 94. So a little backstory behind Robert Mondavi. Uh, Robert Mondavi's from Virginia, Minnesota. Uh, how he came to be in Virginia, Minnesota is his father's from Italy. He immigrated over to Virginia, Minnesota to work in the Iron Range with the other Italian communities. And uh, that's what spurred him coming to California, his father, to purchase grapes for the Italians during Prohibition, his personal consumption, so they could still drink it. So he purchased grapes in California, in Lodi, California, brought it back to Virginia, Minnesota, and uh, sold it through his grocery store. So that's where they got their fortune, was um, selling of grapes. So after Prohibition repealed, his father uh, came to California and uh, worked out of Lodi, California, which is where most of the grapes in the United States come from, Lodi, California. Uh, and after that, Robert Mondavi convinced his father to purchase a winery here in 1943 called Charles Krug, and that's where they became winemakers. His brother was the winemaker, Peter, and Robert was the one that sold the wines. Uh, they had a lot of sibling rivalries going on between the two brothers, and they separated in 1965. So 1966 was the first winery after Prohibition, so adversity of, after Prohibition, you have uh, going through a divorce with his first wife, and then you have commercialization, which was non-existent here. So Robert Mondavi set the standard and made Napa Valley what it is today. A fun fact, 85% of all the grapes grown in the United States comes from the state of California. Table grapes is 99%. So if you have table grapes in your uh, stores right now, they're not from the United States. They're from Chile. Yeah, that's true. Because we don't have yeah. grapes yet. Right. So out of the 85% that comes from the state of California, 4% only comes from Napa Valley. So 81% of your total grapes in the United States does not come from the most famous region, mm -hmm. Napa Valley. Now if you were to combine Sonoma mm -hmm. with Napa Valley, that's only 10%. So 75% does not come from the two most famous regions. It comes from regions uh, Mendocino, Lake County, Lodi, California, the central coastline, so you have Monterey, Paso Robles, Santa Barbara, and then further south you have Temecula down in uh, San Diego area. There's a huge valley here in California called the San Joaquin Valley. That's where most of your commodity wines, mm -hmm. the grapes, come from. But the quality fruit comes from the, the uh, Napa Valley because of the growing so conditions, the soils, and the climate conditions here. Mm -hmm. so. We went to a winery down in uh, the Cupertino area yeah. a couple days ago. And so do you want to talk about your connection to that? Because we basically... You mean what the rich, was the, yeah, what was that? Winery. Yeah, so what was that wine that we had there? It was a Syrah. Syrah, and it was one of the best we've had in a very long time, and we were telling you about that, yeah. and you said... You tugged on my heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> I have three wineries that I love to death. Every single wine that I've ever had from these three wineries blew me away, and one of those was Ridge Vineyards. They have a uh, winery in Cupertino, for yep. the south of us here, Bay Area, uh, and then they also have a winery in Sonoma, oh, which is okay. Lake Springs. So they actually have fruit from Napa Valley, Sonoma, and the, the Bay Area as well. Mm -hmm. Some of their best wines, uh, one of their best wines is Montebello, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. That actually went to a blind tasting in Paris, France in 1976 with other wineries here. Mm -hmm. uh, some California wineries decided to join a Paris tasting in 1976 where they gathered all the best wines from all over the world. This is what put Napa Valley on the map, by the way. This oh, okay. competition in Paris, France called oh, cool. the Judgment of Paris. So this is 1976. Two wineries from Napa Valley decided to join the competition. Chateau Montalina brought their white wine against the best Burgundies, and Stag's Leap Wine Cellars brought their Cabernets against the best Bordeaux. And Ridge was one of those other California wineries that got it, went mm -hmm. against the, the uh, French wines. So there was, this was a blind tasting through all the best wines in the world, and French judges were 
raining these wines, they chose the American wines for the first time ever. Wow. That's what put Napa Valley on the map was this competition, this Paris tasting in 1976. Wow. That's not that long ago. No, not at all. Where is these wines coming from? This little valley called Napa Valley. That's yeah. what put us on the map. Now, unbeknownst to a lot of people, and there's a great documentary called Bottle Shock on Netflix, if you want to um, check that, that out. Really? Okay, um, we're going to see Bottle that Shock. Mm -hmm. um, those two wineries, winemakers, started with Robert Mondavi first. Oh, okay. So a lot of these young, up-inspiring winemakers decided to work for Robert Mondavi to get inspired and make exceptional premium wines. Robert's uh, philosophy was to be in the company of all the great wineries in the world. So from that tasting, now mm -hmm. we're in the company of all mm -hmm. the great wineries in the world. Yeah. So Ridges Syrah has grown up in Leighton? Yeah. Is that okay? mm -hmm. So it really isn't in the from their vineyard they just the have their main tasting room that's their main property just like this property here mm -hmm. uh, but they have vineyard sites in napa valley they have some in sonoma and a, a couple of uh, rowers down in the uh, bay area, mm -hmm. the area. Mm -hmm. you're gonna if you went to their uh, estate they have vineyards all around them that's mm -hmm. mountain fruit so their their wines are really robust intense and complex because they're in higher elevations and they stress the vines they out. They are high. So that's it why they like going like, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Going up to yeah. It. So their wines are more robust and complex due to the fact that that's completely different fruit growing mm -hmm. in a specific area. So higher elevation wineries will have more intensity in their wines. That's why um, when I was talking to you about the wine, it was really, I said it was really intense and complex. Do you have anything like that here? No, because we have our fruit growing in the valley floor, mm -hmm. different climate, different soil, different elevation. Here. Mm -hmm. This is only about 200 feet of elevation. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something that we don't really think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so elevation. Awesome. Industry trade will say this is valley floor fruit and you'll get a red fruit note to the wine. If you get up into like Howl Mountain, the Atlas Peak area, Spring Mountain, that's stylistically very similar to that um, Zinfandel Cabernet Syrah that you've had at um, the Ridge Vineyards. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are premium, premium wines. Yeah, well, Top we loved three. it. My whole list, and I've drank a lot of wine. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, you're a part of a wine club, you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you know your stuff. Uh, I was part of their wine club. Um, I can go anytime I want now because working in the business, you can taste oh, yeah. there anytime you want. Sure. So I just do that. But, so there's another winery called Saxon. Mm -hmm. Look for it in your stores. Saxon is where um, Ridge is. It's down the way. How do you spell that? Uh, Saxon. S A X U M. U M. Okay. Uh, one of their labels is called James Berry 2007, if you can find it. So, fun little story behind this wine. Uh, it got rated 100 points in 2007. It's a $30 bottle of wine, okay? And it was part of my wine club. Mm -hmm. Loved it, great value for it. Robert Parker rated this wine 100 points in 2007 and won Wine of the Year. It was Wine Spectator's Top 100, number one. And it was on the, uh, the front of the magazine. Now it's not $30 a bottle, it's $350 uh, a bottle. Yeah. So just be careful yeah. when you're looking at <laughs> ratings and they, if they get a good rating, they'll hike the price up. It's a yeah. great, great wine, but mm -hmm. 350 is a little expensive. Yeah, taste. exactly. There's plenty of other good ones. There's that are really good value wines range. out there. $50 range mm -hmm. is in my wheelhouse too. Yeah, so definitely. Enjoy it. The, the whole concept of wine is to uh, in, heighten the experience. The experience helps wine. It's mm -hmm. not the other way around. I found $5 bottles of wine to be really good and I found $100 bottles of wine to be really That's bad. True. Definitely. So just find your little niche, what you like to drink, and don't let anybody tell you differently. Exactly. Europeans pair their uh -huh. wine with food. Americans pair wine with wine. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> much. Like to drink, basically. Yeah. <laughs> We're starting to get into food and wine pairing now, and Robert Mondavi was instrumental in bringing in culinary arts here, our mm -hmm. artists. So now we're doing it like the Europeans, which have been doing it a lot longer than us. Yeah, so we're starting exactly. to get refined and culture here, but Europe yeah. is the way, way to go. The yeah. first gentleman to plant out here, his name was Hamilton Walker Crab. He planted 400 different types of grapes. Wow. And by whittling it down, Cabernet worked very well in these conditions here. So we only plant seven grapes now. So we tried a lot of trial mm -hmm. and error with growing out here. This is where his original site was back here in the back part of the, the mountains. Um, and that's 400 different types of grapes out there. And monastery blocks, so there was monks to tend them? Yep, monks. There's oh, a yeah, monastery cool. back there to, to this day. Oh. And if you notice the building, it looks like a mission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. California, paying homage to California's history mm -hmm. and the missionaries that brought mission grapes. So we actually have some vines that still have those canes off of it, which is a display vine. Those are mission grapes that were brought over from missionaries, oh. Spanish missionaries. Well, good. Well, thank you very much for all your information. Cool. Yay. Awesome. All right. Enjoy your wine. All right.